The music it makes is as complex as it is majestic. The pipe organ is one of the largest and most technically sophisticated instruments. Building one is an incredible feat of engineering and craftsmanship. Early man discovered he could make music by blowing across hollow reeds of different lengths. In ancient Egypt, an engineer devised what later would become the basic technology of the pipe organ, a steady airflow without mouth blowing while controlling the air to each pipe to create different notes. By the Middle Ages, the pipe organ was a fixture in churches throughout Europe. Johann Sebastian Bach composed his greatest works for organ while working as a musical director of a church. A concept artist creates the design. The design then goes to a draftsperson who prepares the technical drawings. The organ's pipes are made of a mixture of tin and lead. Tin, the harder metal, gives brightness to the sound, while lead, the softer metal, gives it warmth. Artisans pour the molten alloy into a tray, then draw it out to form a sheet. As the sheet cools, the two metals react to each other, creating spots. The sheet goes into storage to give the alloy time to stabilize. Two to three months later, it's ready to be formed into organ pipes. First, they cut pieces of metal in the shape of each pipe using templates and large rollers. Then they roll each piece using a mandrel. The larger the organ, the more pipes it has. Pipes are grounded in sets of 61 corresponding to the 61 black and white keys on the keyboard. An elaborate organ can have more than 10,000 pipes. The pipe maker carefully seals the body of each pipe by hand using tin solder. Next, he solders the body of the pipe to the foot and languid. The languid is the part that produces the pipe sound. The process of giving a specific sound to each pipe is called voicing. This work is done by a trained musician called a voicer. He enlarges the mouth of the pipe, called the cut-up, until it's approximately a quarter of the width across. He adjusts the pipe some more, blowing air through it to judge how to further refine the tone. Next come the wind chests, also called the soundboards. These are the large wooden boxes filled with air on which the pipes stand. Under each pipe is an air channel covered by a valve. The valve is made of leather and sits on a wooden board. When the organist pushes a key on the keyboard, the corresponding valve drops down like a trapdoor, releasing air into the pipe to play the note. They glue the valves to the wind chest one at a time using animal glue. It's suppler and dries faster than synthetic glue. The valves are connected to the organ's keys mechanically by long tracks of cedar wood or by electrical wiring. The electric signal triggers electromagnets to cause a sudden air depression, making the trapdoor valve drop down and let the air in. The console is the organ's brain. It contains all the controls for the keys and sets of pipes. The organ's white keys are made of linden wood covered with bone. The black keys of ebony or rosewood. An artisan adjusts the keys using a weight. When the weight rises, the tension is just right. 
The console, keys, and all the other components are finally put together in the assembly room. After testing, they disassemble the organ and ship it to its destination, where it's reassembled. The voicers come on site to perform what's called tonal finishing. They check and adjust each pipe according to the acoustics of the room. This process can take many months for a large and elaborate organ.